Hello, it's me, Ashley, and I'm back finally <clears throat> with chapter two of the web novel of Marry My Husband, and we're, I'm just going to jump into it. So chapter two is Death by Accident. Slender and petite Suman was Jiwan's longtime friend from back home. She was Jiwan's only friend, really, and the two of them had always been like sisters. Jiwan didn't have much luck with people, especially as a child. Everyone avoided the towering thin girl with thick glasses and a tightly tied ponytail. The few people she could even call friends always distanced themselves as time passed. After an endless repetition of this cycle, Jiwan eventually gave up on relationships and crawled deeper into the cave known as Solitude. On the other hand, Suman had always looked out for Jiwan during their elementary, middle, and high school years, speaking highly of her to others. The two went their separate ways when Jiwan left for Seoul for college, but later, after Jiwan started her job, she recommended Suman and they were able to work at the same company. They were always together after that. To Jiwan, Suman was half her world. If it wasn't for Suman, she would have had a depressing school life and dropped out without graduating. But that very Suman was in her house with her husband. Jiwan couldn't make it to turn couldn't come to terms with this undeniable truth. No, there has to be some misunderstanding. Yes. Suman probably dropped by to bring me my belongings. I did tell her I needed some more underwear some time ago. Yes, of course, that has to be it. Standing there, frozen, her mind refused to come to terms with reality, but her gut was faster and more precise than her head. Deep down, she knew the truth. Her teeth began to chatter and her body trembled as if it was the middle of winter. Jiwan clenched her jaw and crept into the living room without taking her shoes off. She continued forward past the sofa where a woman's coat lay to the bedroom. Then let's take out the deposit and move. A voice that was sickening, sickeningly sweet, like marshmallows, escaped the closed bedroom door. It was the same voice he'd used to whisper in her ear that night at the company dinner the same voice she had never heard once again after the incident with Min Wan's mother. <laughs> How much did you say the deposit was? I want to live in a brand new apartment, babe. That was definitely Suman's voice, albeit more salacious and petulant than the usual one Jiwan knew. Of course, let's find a place as soon as I get the insurance money. Hmm, How much will you get? 500 million won. Jiwan, whose mind was still frozen, didn't think the insurance Min Wan was talking about was related to her. It was only natural since Jiwan didn't have any life insurance at all, let alone a policy that was worth 500 million. That was more. What was more, she'd been forced to cancel every insurance policy in her name when times were hard, regardless of type so she didn't even have the most basic of coverage. This was why she couldn't even dream of affording the treatment to cure her cancer. Really? That much? How? Suman exclaimed in a surprised and delighted voice. Her dad died from cancer too. I heard it was hereditary. She kept having stomach aches and indigestion, so I took out insurance on her before taking her to the hospital. So that was why Min Wan had been so caring for the first time in a while. Jiwan had been getting ready to head to the hospital herself, but he gave her indigestion medicine and told her to lie down in bed for a while. He added that he would drive her to the hospital if her stomach continued to hurt. Learning what his real intentions were was a greater shock than the shoes at the entrance. Blood rushed to her head. Jiwan reached for the handle to the bedroom door, her hand so numb that it didn't feel like her own. So you got money from cancer insurance too? 
Then babe, will you buy me a designer handbag? I bought you one last month. She'll be dead in six months, so just wait. I'll buy you everything you want after that. Minwon and Suman were the world to Jiwon, which meant that in a single moment, her entire world came crashing down around her. Jiwon wasn't even breathing anymore as she pushed down on the handle. The door opened with a telling creak. Suman, who was lying naked on Jiwon's bed, the same bed she and Minwon had bought for their honeymoon, opened her eyes wide as if she was seeing a ghost. Jiwon? Honey. Minwon, also naked, quickly sat up. Behind him, Suman fumbled to cover herself with sheets. They looked like a pair of animals in heat. The sight was shocking and unrealistic. Jiwon laughed to herself and stepped inside the horrifying room. Honey, this isn't what it looks like. You bastard! Brisk words escaped her clenched teeth. Minwan's mouth dropped open as if this was his first time hearing Jiwan swear. What? What did you just, you disgusting bastard? Like an erupting volcano, the rage Jiwan kept suppressed exploded at once. And you call yourself human? Is that what you learned from this superior mother of yours? Even animals don't act like this, you bastard. Jiwon threw whatever her hand reached on the vanity. Even in this situation, the bastard was busy protecting Suman with the blankets. Jiwon, you're being ridiculous. When Minwon bellowed like this, Jiwon normally cowered and apologized, even if she hadn't done anything wrong. Of course, Jiwon wasn't doing that now. <laughs> ridiculous? <laughs> Did you just say I'm ridiculous? Sparks crackled from Jiwon's widened eyes. Yeah, I'm ridiculous. Did you think I'd be in my right mind? I lived with a deranged bastard like you, so it would be more ridiculous if I was sane. A desk mirror narrowly flew past Minwon's ear and shattered to pieces behind him. You're wrong if you think I'll die like this. I'm going to take my divorce settlement and plaster a handwritten poster at the company. I'm going to tell your families and put your faces online so you can't even walk around in public. Insurance money? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. You're going to spit up everything you've taken so far. Jiwon. Suman collected her bearings in a flash after hearing Jiwon would make a handwritten poster and put their pictures online. She frantically crawled to Jiwon, still covered in the sheets. Please don't do this. Hmm? We're friends. We're best friends. Huh, friends? Jiwon laughed in disbelief. She roughly flung Suman's hand away from her cardigan like it was a bug. What kind of friend sleeps with her sick friend's husband? And while calculating how much her insurance money is worth, too? J Jiwon, please, I beg you, please don't tell my family and her colleagues, please. Tears formed in Suman's big eyes. Jiwon regretted how many times in the past she'd been dragged around by Suman because of these crocodile, crocodile tears that fell at the drop of a hat. Your family? in that company that are so important to you in this situation? Th then what else am I supposed to, to do? Oh my Suman wiped her face with the sheets as she sobbed. Can't you overlook this, please? I have my whole life ahead of me and you're going to die anyway. <laughs> Some sort of restraint wore thin by everything else snapped in Jiwon's head. The situation was so disgusting and horrendous that she felt sick. Suman Jiyong, I'm going to kill you. Jiwon grabbed the kneeling woman's hair. While the two were arguing, Minwon had been fumbling to put his underwear on and he now rushed over to stop Jiwon. Jiwon, let go. I won't, you bastard. You let go. 
How someone so thin and frail looking was so strong, Minwan didn't know. Jiwon was nearly flinging Suman around by the hair, shaking and kicking her at the same time. Help me, babe! Ah! Jiwon! Minwan hollered as he ran at her. Jiwon's vision blurred and her glasses flew off. Minwan had gifted her with all kinds of verbal abuse and nearly spent all their assets, but this was the first time he hit her. Jiwon could taste blood from her split lip. However, she couldn't feel the pain over the hurt in her heart. Did you just hit me? Minwan quickly lifted Suman and hit her from behind, hit her behind him. What? Did you really not expect me to hit after hitting someone else? That's what you get for trying to ruin our lives, so just die quietly. Minwan's sharp words rang in the air. Jiwon hunched over to find her glasses and picked them up. Beyond the lenses of the now bent frames, she could see Minwan resent, res, Minwan's resentful expression. Whose fault is it that I'm on my deathbed again? <laughs> oh, right. It's all because of you and your parents. While those horrible beings said nasty things about me being raised without a mother and my dead father, you took all my money to invest in stocks and shouted at me whenever you felt like it. If I had gone to the hospital sooner, I would have been able to live, you murderer. Seething rage from the past years formed tears of anger in Jiwon's eyes. She glowered at Minwon and used all her willpower not to cry. I'm going to take all of you with me when I die, you and your parents. You'll die. You'll never die in peace. You little. Minwon lifted his hand and swung it. This time it was a pow instead of a slap. Jiwon's already weakened body couldn't stand against his strength. She was tossed back against a vanity she had received in celebration of their marriage. Her forehead slammed against one of its sharp corners. Her hands helplessly flailed in the air, unable to support her falling body. Her bent glasses fell back to the ground and a warm substance flowed from Jiwon's still head, staining her white red cap red. <gasps> ah, Jiwon! Tears she, barely, she was barely holding in dripped to the side. She saw Min Wan frantically trying to stop the bleeding while Suman stood there, anxiously. But the scene quickly darkened as if the lights were put out, and she could only hear the humming of faint voices. Well, what if she's dead, babe? Ugh, whatever. She was going to die anyway. Why am I so unlucky? With that, her consciousness was extinguished. The doctor gave her three to six months to live, twelve at most, if there was a miracle. But Jiwon Kang, 37 years old, died without even being able to live out her last days. Jiwon, lunchtime is over. Jiwon's eyes shot open upon hearing her name. The person who woke her jumped back in surprise. Oh my, Jiwon, are you okay? Goodness, you're even sweating. Was this the illusion people saw before death? Jiwon had no idea what was going on. With trembling hands, she touched her head. She was fine. Her head wasn't bleeding or caved in. The frame of her glasses was also fine. The strangest thing of all though, was the hair. Her searching fingers fell. Yes, she was wearing a long ponytail, just like it was before receiving chemotherapy. Impossible. Someone spoke out of concern as Jiwon stared at her hair, mystified. Are you not feeling well? You're really pale, Jiwon. Jiwon then slowly turned around to see the person next to her. It was someone she was familiar with. Jiwon had been acquainted with Section Chief Zhurong Yang for a while, but they weren't that close. There was no reason for Miss Yang to appear in a flashback she saw before death. Miss Yang? 
Are you all right? Do you want some water? Juron quickly grabbed out a cup and held it under the water purifier. How are you here? You quit a long time ago. Jiwan left the words unspoken as she stared at Juron Yang. What? You're a young lady who's not even married yet. How can you be so forgetful? Already? Juron chuckled and pushed forward a paper cup. Jiwan accepted the cup that was half full of warm water with a dumbfounded expression. I got back from parental leave a while ago, Jiwan. I'm working. I'm a working mom now. Jiwan almost dropped the cup. If she recalled correctly, Joran had returned after taking parental leave, but she quit not too long after. Jiwan remembered this because it happened around the time Minwan proposed to her and they got married. And what? A young lady who isn't even married? Me? Jiwan turned to look outside the window, just like when she had left the hospital with the cardigan, cherry blossoms were falling into the roads. Miss Yang? Jiwan was looking outside the window with astonishment, turned back to Juran. You drank it all. Do you want more? What day is it? April 10th. April 10th. It was the date she saw on her phone before leaving the hospital. Oh. The year? What year is it? Jiran fur furrowed her eyebrows in concern. You're not really asking it because you don't know it's 2009, are you? It's been a while since the new year started. Jiwan couldn't breathe. Impossible. There's no way. She urgently dug her hand into her pocket. What came out wasn't the phone that was cracked. Because Minwan threw it, but a flip phone with glowing neon signs on the front screen. The one she had was pink. Minwan had gotten the blue one. With, this shake, with shaking hands, she flipped it open. The screen revealed with a click, displaying the date as April 10th, 2009. The date she died was April 10th, 2019. Today was April 10th, 2009. The woman who was murdered by her husband and his mistress after a dreadful marriage returned 10 years into the past. And that is the end of chapter two. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay, so thoughts, 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 thoughts. This chapter was really good. Um, I think it's even more brutal than the webtoon and the drama because in the drama, and I think in the webtoon, in both of them, Minwan just shoved her and she fell. And that's how she passed away. And this one he slapped and then he punched her. Which is way worse. The fact that they were naked as well they can't really draw that or show that in those medias um, because of restraints, but that just makes it even, it just makes it even more terrible because it's already bad, but then she sees them naked too. So they're like immediate post coitus. I'm like, damn that this chapter is so good i like that she didn't immediately take off like in the webtoon or in the drama and i don't know if she, maybe in chapter three she might bolt or not but i kind of like this more believable sense of trying to come to terms with finding out that you've gone into the past. I'm really excited again about getting into Marry My Husband. 
I kind of like overwhelmed myself with doing like too many things at once and things are starting to like calm down and I'm starting to get back into a familiar pace of getting things done. So I apologize for not having this video up, but I hope you do enjoy it. If you do want to stick around, please like, comment, and subscribe. Um, what are your thoughts on chapter two? It was great. It was really good. But um, I hope you enjoy your day, afternoon, or evening, whatever time it is that you're watching or listening. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.